Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, July the 15th of 2024. So this will cover the week of July 8th through the 14th of 2024. So this isn't going to be a super long update, I don't think, because there wasn't a ton of trophy progress. But there are some other things to talk about in relation to plans for the upcoming week or so. So in terms of progress, I only made progress on a total of three games, and one of those was finishing off Power Wash Simulator's Alice's Adventure Special Pack. As with other Power Wash Simulator DLCs, this game is very, very easy. Basically, you just have to complete the five new jobs, the Wonderland Entrance, White Rabbit's House, the Caterpillar Mushroom, Mad Tea Party, and Queen of Hearts Court. So complete those five new levels or jobs, whatever you want to call them, and you'll get five of your trophies, including all of your silvers. And then there's a miscellaneous bronze trophy for each individual level. So for this one, you just have to put the ladder up against the wall, like sort of where you start at, and just try to climb up it, and that's how you get this trophy. For this one, you just have to clean the clocks first. That's a pretty typical kind of power wash trophy. Just mark them from your pause menu and clean the like 20-ish clocks first. The Caterpillar Mushroom just marked the Cocoon last. It's actually pretty big, so this time it's pretty tough to miss this one if you know to go for it. So just mark it and just save it for last because it's one of the biggest objects on this job. Then in the Mad Tea Party, this is a very simple one. Just stand on top of the strawberry on the very top cake for 10 seconds and you will get this trophy. It's like the trophy for the Penny Far thing, I think it was, back in the base game. And then finally for the Queen of Hearts Court, just pick up the pink croquet ball and put it into the finish heart. And that's all you have to do. And if you are struggling with any of these, I'm sure that there are video guides up for them, but they're all pretty straightforward. But the only trophy I had left as of last week was finishing the Queen of Hearts Court. And I got that one done like the next day, so it wasn't really much of a problem. So as always with Power Wash Simulator, I love the game. I just kind of wish they'd start only releasing the DLCs on PS5. But like, yeah, the Warhammer DLC, there's not really much of a point of going through all these because I don't think anything has changed with any of them. I will say, though, what I mentioned previously, that the jobs in this DLC feel like they average out to be a little bit longer than something like, maybe not necessarily, maybe similar to the Warhammer DLC, but definitely a little bit longer than the... Uh, Back to the Future DLC, maybe a little bit longer than this. Well, no, the SpongeBob DLC had like six total jobs, even though a few of them were short. But yeah, I don't think anything's changed here with the Platinum, but th this game should be fully completable now for the people who were running into the bug with this trophy as it was foretold. This is supposed to be fixed now, so you shouldn't be having any issues with it anymore, but that should have been fixed quite a while back, so hopefully it still is, and hopefully it actually is fixed. So yeah, that's it for Power Wash Simulator for the next few months, but I'm sure that we'll continue to get more DLC for the game, and I'm definitely excited to keep going back to it, but like I said, I just wish they'd only release it on the PS5. Next up, the Walking Dead Telltale Definitive series. I streamed the game once this past week, and didn't make the amount of progress I thought I would. Season 4 is actually longer than I remember it being, because each of the episodes is divided into three acts, and so far I've only completed all of episode one and the first act of episode two, so really have not made the progress that I thought I was going to make, so it's probably going to actually take two more streams to finish this. Next stream would probably be finishing off episode two and starting episode three, like maybe getting about halfway through episode three, and then the final stream would be the rest of episode three and then episode four, I think episode 4 is shorter than the other ones, but I could be wrong on that because it's been so long since i played. But as always, Circle Only is a more entertaining way to play the game, and it definitely makes it better when you've already... Well, I would say it makes games better when you've already played through them a bunch of times, but with this game you had to make very specific choices the first time through to get certain trophies, at least for the actual normal version of it. But now we can just do Circle and Look Right Only. So, two more streams, and we will be done with this final episode of The Walking Dead, and we will have this Platinum Trophy. How rare is this one? I'm actually surprised it's that common. Like, obviously it's no difficulty, it's a 1 out of 10 in difficulty, but I'm really surprised it's that common, given that it takes like 35 hours to 40 hours, depending on how well you know the games and try to progress through them quickly, so... I'm a little surprised it's that high of a percentage, because how many hours am I at on this game? Yeah, 32 hours, and we still got another probably 
four to five hours to go. So, yeah, I don't really know how that Platinum is as common as it is. That's actually quite surprising. And finally, progress was, of course, made on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the Modern Warfare 3 DLC. It's actually pretty close to being done. There's only four trophies left. So, currently, this past week, I managed to get the 500 kills with an insured weapon. That was very easy. That was something that was going to come naturally over time, so it wasn't actually difficult. For Perkaholic, for this one, I was able to grab a large backpack, so it's the 9-slot backpack. And I had eight of the Perka Colas available, so eight different cans available. And I just needed the new Elemental Pop, I think is what it's called. So I just went around, purchased that perk, and then drank all of the perk cans. And it popped this trophy. So it's not particularly hard. It just takes a little bit of time to farm all of the cans. Because they're completely random drops from different contracts and stuff that you can do. But it's easy enough. Obviously, x -Fill is the first trophy you're probably going to get in the game. As for level... I am something like a level 32-ish. Obviously, I will get to this no problem because of one of the later trophies. Then I reclaimed my gear from a tombstone. Basically, what you do is you drink the tombstone soda, you get yourself killed, and then you return to that spot on your next deployment and pick up the tombstone and you get your gear back. So it's pretty much as easy as that. It's, it's not a difficult trophy at all. It just works a little bit differently from how it did in the previous games. Then reviving the player from different squad, I did that at some point a while back. That one was fairly easy, but apparently this one's kind of buggy and only certain types of revives sometimes work for some reason. Then I managed to pet the doggo, which is still one of the only decent trophies in this game. Although it is a little bit annoying to trigger because first you have to find a chunk of meat, which they're not particularly hard to find. You can especially get them from running zombies over with vehicles. But then you also have to find the Hellhound Doghouse, which is kind of random. And then sometimes you still can't pet the dog even once you've fed him the meat. It's a little bit, a little bit finicky like some of these other trophies are. Nothing too terribly difficult, but yeah, it can be just a little bit questionable. Then complete 20 contracts. That one was, of course, going to come naturally. Not difficult at all. Then this trophy is going to be the hardest thing I have left just because five contracts in high threat. I've only been in the high threat zone a couple of times and got my ass handed to me every time very quickly. So I'm definitely going to need to find a good couple of other players to help me with this one. Because I'm not bad at this game zombies, but this particular trophy is just going to be brutal because the zombies have such a ridiculous amount of health in that zone. They're super fast. They can kill you almost instantly. You pretty much need stamina up and to have one of your weapon slots be empty. So hopefully I can knock that out pretty soon though. Then the big completion of this week with this game was the completion of Act 3 and killing Orcus in the six-person squad because if you, when you kill Orcus, it actually will auto-pop the Act 3 trophy, which is fantastic. Now for this trophy, I don't know what Kindergarten Dropout that works for Activision or Sledgehammer thought this trophy made sense to anyone, because, for those who don't know, the maximum squad size you can have going into a game is three. So, three is less than six, meaning that you need to get into another squad. You need to have another squad that wants to join up with you and then make, create like a big squad of six people. But even trying to boost this, there's no guarantee that all six players on their two different squads can even get into the same lobby together. And it took us a solid, like, hour probably to get into the same lobby together. And I've heard of other people having way worse luck than that that took two to three hours to get into the same lobby together. So again, I don't know what mathematically challenged person decided that this trophy made sense to anyone. And also, this has to be one of the stupidest boss fights I've ever seen in COD Zombies. It's a giant robotic, like, worm thing. It, and apparently, Zakaev is in this somewhere. Even though, wasn't he only in, like, the Zombies or the Spec Ops for Modern Warfare 1? Again, I don't understand the story to this game because, again, I'm going to use the same word I've been using. It's just plain stupid. That is the best word that you can use to describe this entire game, this entire existence. Then I still have these two trophies left. The 50,000 total kills is not difficult, just extremely grindy. I'm at about 47... No, I think I was at 4,700 before my last match, so I'm probably at around 5,000. So 
Should be about 10% of the way through and already have all these other trophies done. Also have to defeat a Warlord. This one, I know how to do it. But the one time I had the perka colas all of them going at once and a decent pack-a-punched weapon, I couldn't get the special area where they're supposed to be to spawn at. Like, it wasn't appearing anywhere on the map, so I don't know if someone else cleared it out first. And then another time I tried to beat the Warlord, I wasn't well-prepared enough, and I died pretty quickly. So I think I probably just need partners for that one, but I don't think it's particularly hard compared to the five contracts in High Threat. Supposedly, I would assume that Escort and the what's it called, the bounty one, when you have to kill the marked target, I would assume those two were probably the two easiest types of contracts to do. And then, of course, you're also fighting against the time limit, because there's only a 45-minute time limit per game, so you're also fighting against that. And now we can get into the single player, where I finished every last single player trophy. So, find and use all the armaments and open combat missions. This means find all, I think it's 12 total different kill streaks and use all of them. It's pretty straightforward, but the game doesn't tell you which ones you've used. Then, customize your loadout. This one, I think, is an unmissable story trophy now. You should just get it by playing all of the open combat missions. Then I got this trophy, which wasn't too terribly difficult. It's basically just find everything, like all of the supply boxes in the open combat missions. There's anywhere from like 10 to 30 of them per mission, so there are quite a few. But you can look at maps or guides online if you get lost looking for any of them. I would say High Rise is definitely the most difficult one, simply because it's so strangely laid out, because it's a giant vertical building with like 7 or 8 floors you can explore. So that's probably the hardest one. All the other ones aren't too bad. Had already done this trophy, had already done that trophy, already did the spotter scope. The plate carrier upgrades. So these actually are not in those supply crates. These are actually a separate type of collectible. There are two plate carrier upgrades per open combat mission, so 12 total. And the game does not actually necessarily keep track of this. Though, when you go into Mission Select and select one of these missions, it will show you how much armor you can go in with at maximum. And if you can go in with three, that means you found the carrier upgrades. But then you might have to look up a video to see, or even just a picture guide to see where the other carriers are if you miss them. Okay, this trophy. This trophy was absolutely horrible. This trophy is broken. It's quite unreasonable, in my opinion. Because the mortar strike is extremely inaccurate, and then the helicopters just don't behave correctly. I was eventually able to get it to work when the helicopter would, like, sort of lock down and stay in an area. But I could not, for the life of me, get that to work during the live stream, which is why I kind of gave up on it in that stream. I just, for the life of me, could not get the helicopter to stand still when I was on the live stream trying to get this trophy. I got it after about another 45 minutes of attempts... Uh, on Sunday, but it was still really, really annoying. Then, let's see, 10 enemies while using a zip line. This one's actually pretty easy. You can use the explosive crossbow to do it. It makes it a lot easier. Of course, I've already talked about how dumb the campaign was. Veteran really is not that hard in this game. You shouldn't have too much of a problem with it. And then, each helicopter and reactor with a different armament. I tried to get this done on Veteran, but certain kill streaks just didn't work well enough. Because apparently a stealth bomber can't take out one helicopter for some reason, unless it's already taken damage. And then this one, this one took quite a few tries. This time limit is actually pretty strict. Because even with a near-perfect run, I think the fastest you can do it is probably about 85-ish seconds. I think is probably the fastest you could do it. And I got it with literally about one, maybe two seconds to spare. So this one is a little bit tricky, so just keep that one in mind. Definitely watch a guide first and see exactly what path to take. Then the roof in high rise in under 45 seconds. This one's pretty easy once you know the path and you have the ascension gun. You can't do it without the ascension gun, though. Then this one was like the first trophy I got in the stream. It was super easy. Just ran up right behind the sniper and... Uh, stuck the knife in whatever part of his body it's stuck in, and yeah, that's it. So, getting close in terms of the number of trophies to being done, it's really just grinding out those 50,000 kills, which will get me to level 55, and then these other two miscellaneous trophies that I'm probably going to need to find a couple of other good partners to do these with. I mean, they shouldn't take too long either, which is good, like a couple of games probably, but I'll definitely need to have good partners for it. But yeah, aside from the 50,000 kills and the level 55, I should be pretty close to being done with this game by next week. And Modern Warfare 2 will be officially back to 100% until Black Ops 6 comes out and inevitably adds on more trophies. And we all know that Treyarch is typically the most difficult developer when it comes to trophies. So let's go ahead and sync up.
All right, level 866, 34%, 28,349 total trophies, 806 platinums, 5,336 gold, 7,585 silvers, 14,622 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. There is quite a bit to talk about coming up because... July the 14th of 2024, so the day that I recorded this video and the day before it goes up, was actually the YouTube channel's 14th anniversary, which is pretty awesome. Now, I initially had other plans for what I wanted to do for this. It was going to be like several big streams this week of just playing various stuff. Probably not all. Like, one of them would be Walking Dead, but then the others would be something else. And just having fun with all of that. But plans changed a bit because Lizard Guy's actually going to be home. He's on leave for like the next week and a half. So me and him are going to be hanging out next weekend. And I'm sure that means that we will stream at least once. We'll make probably a couple of videos and stuff. But that's going to be a good time so we can sort of have that be the 14 year celebration, anniversary, whatever you want to call it. Additionally, I also just released a Q&A video in which I'm just asking you guys to go ahead and give me questions to answer on an actual Q&A answering thing. It'll probably be like a live action one where I'm recording myself on a camera, reading out the questions and such. So that should be fun because it's been quite a few years since I've done that. So I will be doing that in the near future, probably sometime right after next weekend. I'm going to leave the video public for about a week. But yeah, so schedule's going to be a little bit up in the air this week because, you know, I wasn't expecting uh, he was going to be off this week, so we're actually going to be able to hang out and stream and everything or just play games and just enjoy life a little bit. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. He actually just finished the Elden Ring DLC. I know it doesn't have trophies to it, but he, he finished that because he's actually, like, good at From Software games. Because I think he's gotten the Platinum and the 100% in, like, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, Sekiro, one of the Dark Souls games. I don't think he's done Dark Souls 2 or Demon Souls. I need to ask him that when we're hanging out. And he's done Armored Core 6 as well. So, yeah, he's actually pretty good at, like, From Software games and such. So, anyway, we will figure out what we want to stream and play over the course of this next week. We'll, we'll just figure it all out. Along with all of that, I don't know what kind of progress I'm going to make on editing videos because obviously I'm going to be kind of busy this week with all this other stuff, but I would like to hopefully get the next Fallout lore video done pretty soon. I haven't really had much time to start on the 701 through 800 video. I don't think it's going to be too hard to edit. It's just going to take a while because it's such a large file. So those are sort of the main priorities for sort of longer term projects to get edited. Oh, also, 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 I have a job interview on Tuesday, so that's exciting. Hopefully I can get out of the shit show that is my current employment, but we will have to see. So, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, made it all the way to the end, go ahead and leave me a like, subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't done so already. Let me know down in the comments what you guys have been working on this past week, and definitely go over to that Q&A video and post some questions for me to answer whenever that video goes up in about like another week and a half, probably. So, thank you all for watching it, and I will see you all back here later this week for some content at some point. It might not be as much trophy content, but it'll be something. So, see you guys later.